This is one of the only items, along with maybe a wedding ring, a signet ring, that you wear for decade after decade personal against your skin. So how does it impact you? So an important thing to consider when you're wearing a watch is the psychological impact of it. Now this can split into two sides, the internal and also the external. So wearing that watch can have a very large impact. Now let's first look at the internal. How does it impact you? When you put a watch on, this is an incredibly personal thing. Why? Well, firstly, you've picked out this watch. It is something that you like, something that brings you hopefully joy, pleasure, but also it's something you wear against the skin. There are very few items you put on every day that you wear literally against the body. And most of those items that you do, well, here's hoping you're throwing them out every year or two and replacing them with fresh ones, but not your watch. And that's the thing. This is one of the only items, along with maybe a wedding ring, a signet ring, that you wear for decade after decade personal against your skin. So how does it impact you? Well, a watch can become a friend, it become a trusted accessory, it can become lucky through good times, bad times. But put it this way, if you put a sporty, chunky watch on your wrist, for most people, they will just feel that person. They will just feel a little bit sportier, a little bit more adventurous. Whereas, in complete contrast, if you put on an ultra slim dress watch on a fine leather strap, something very small, very refined. It's going to be very difficult for even the toughest of people not to suddenly just feel a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more refined, a little bit more elegant. And that's it. Different watches can make you feel like different people. And the different watch you put on has a big impact on how you feel about yourself and also how you hold yourself. So, Putting on a nice watch, it's very difficult to do that and not stand a little bit taller, with your shoulders a little bit further back. Not because you have to, but because of the way it makes you feel. So now we've covered the internal psychological impact. What's the external psychological impact of putting a watch on your wrist? Well, the watch you wear does tell and signify to the outside world a huge amount, whether you like it to or not. There's a saying in the watch world, the reason that a lot of men buy an expensive mechanical watch is that it's far easier to wear on your wrist than a Porsche when you're going to the bar. And this sort of is true. I'd like to think we've moved beyond that era of a watch purely conveying a sense of wealth and how much money you have. But certain things are still very true. People do notice that watch peeking out from under the cuff. You go into a meeting, you see someone who is dressed well, dressed sharp, and then you see a very elegant gold wristwatch. And straight away, it shows that they're confident. They don't need to wear something big, large, and shouty. They just have authority. It does say not only who you are, but most importantly, who you want to be and who you want to be perceived as. So we've covered the two sides of the psychological impact of the watch you're wearing. But what watch should you be wearing? This can depend on the outfit, and we'll run through a few ideas of what watch goes with what outfit. But always remember, if what you want to convey and who you are is maybe a bit of a maverick, a bit left field, then maybe what I'm about to say, you're gonna flip around. Watches break down into certain categories. Historically, you've always had the tool watch, so something like a Rolex Submariner. This is a watch designed for a specific purpose. Then, you've got a watch called a sports watch. People often think these are the same, but they are different. A sports watch has been designed for the Playboy in the south of France. It's been designed to be enjoyed in a sporting environment, but it doesn't have to be a worker's watch. It's not a tool watch. You've then got the dress watch. Now the dress watch is very much designed to convey roughly what time you should be arriving at the opera, but it's not something that you would be seen wearing every single day. You've then got this category of just called watch, and that's the majority of watches, something that you are wearing every day. And the watch can be on the dressier side, 
the more elegant side or the sportier side. If you're wearing a tool watch, that tends to be because you're doing the job in hand. So let's go back to that Rolex Submariner. This is a dive watch designed to go 300 meters below sea level. So straight away, you can picture the outfit being worn with this. It's gonna be a wetsuit. It could also be seen as a watch that's very tough and so therefore could be worn when you're doing more extreme activities. The sports watch, I mentioned the Playboy, but think of the sports watch as something when you're going yachting. So this isn't a watch that has a specific function, but it is tough enough to be worn on a beach or worn on a dance floor. So historically, a good example of a sports watch would be the original, the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, a watch created for the tycoons and the playboys in 1972 when they were holidaying in the south of France so that they could leave their dress watch at home and have something that they could wear on the back of a yacht or on the beach. So then we come on to the dress watch. So this is an ultra slim watch like the Patek Philippe Calatrava. This is something that usually has just two hands. It might be lightly waterproof or as I like to call it, martini proof. And this is a watch that you would tend to wear with dinner suit or nowadays if you're not wearing a dinner suit every evening, then you'd wear it with a shirt and nice trousers when going out for a meal going out to the cinema, going out to the opera, a time when you want to be a little more dressed up, a little more formal. Then we come to the fourth category. This is the watch. Now, this can be dressier, can be more casual. This is something that can see you from the start of the day right through to the end. It can be one watch to do it all. But even still, this is where the watch will be, if it's in a dressier standpoint, you'll be wearing it because you naturally wear more shirts, chinos, jumpers. And if it's sportier, you're probably someone who enjoys wearing hoodies, t-shirts, shorts. And so the watch will be appropriate to the outfit. A great example of the watch, the one that takes you from breakfast to dinner, would be the original, the Rolex Datejust. This is a watch that's built 100 meter water resistant. You can wear it on the beach. You can go swimming in it and yet you put it on a leather strap and it's as close to a dress watch as you're going to get. Now I mentioned about being the Maverick. The Maverick is someone who will wear a dinner suit but put on a tool watch. The juxtaposition works but I think it's the old saying you have to know the rules before you break them. So don't get too het up about this but just be aware of what the watch is naturally meant to be positioned with and then you can decide if you're someone who wants to break those exact rules. I hope you've enjoyed this journey through the psychology of wearing a watch. If you have, please like and subscribe and find links to more watch-related content in the description below.